What is up guys, James Carter TV, here for Q&A number two, about two months after the first one, but it's okay, because from now on, I will be consistent with the Q&As, and if you have a question, feel free to comment it down below, and it will be answered next week. You can ask a question about anything and everything, it will be answered, I guarantee you of that. This is no holds barred, you can ask me personal questions, because these videos are going to be a little bit, uh, not even a little bit, a lot more personal than my other videos are, that much is certain. So, before I begin these Q&As though, Q&A Saturday at James Carter TV, I like that phrase, I'm gonna think I'm going to use that. Um... I want to go for a little bit of an opening monologue, just talking about whatever the hell I want to talk about. I think I'm going to make this a weekly thing. Really quick, um, but two months ago, I made a little bit of a channel update, and I said that I had some goals for this channel that we wanted to reach, and we are reaching them. Over 300 subscribers this past two months, 160 of them have come this month, and this is really nice. I really like where this channel is going but i need to still see more growth so keep telling your friends your family all of that to subscribe to james carter tv to check me out and uh the sports community here on youtube is a very funny thing um uh, let me just say i'm not gonna say names but like the top dogs um a lot of them don't have the same style as me like a lot of them a certain eagles fan i'm not gonna say any names eat that pussy four four five uh, no, this is no disrespect, but he has a different style than me. I mean, we already know this. I, I used to kind of do what he did or does in terms of, you know, yelling and throwing and da da da. Um, but I've just kind of gone away from that. And maybe that's why he has more success than I do. And that's fine. And that's great for him. Um, but I still believe this model can work. This way can work. Um, like one of the guys that I, I emulate and hell. Um, in fact, once upon a time, he emulated me, Louis T. Maybe you guys know him, familiar with him. If not, subscribe to him. We have very different, uh, very, very similar styles in terms of the way we do things. And that's why I'm going to see if I can hook up with him for some collaborations in the future. Um, but I'd love, like, for example, one day, you, the new pardon, the interruption, okay? Tony Kornheiser and Mike Wilbon are gone. You have James Carter, you have Louis T on that program. I think we can do it. I mean, I think... In terms of uh, content and smarts and just doing a good job, he's one of the best guys out there. Um, that's just my style. Now, I, again, I love, I mean, I, I love Eat That Pussy. I love watching his videos as much as the next guy in terms of seeing him throw a temper tantrum. Who doesn't love a good temper tantrum? Uh, but some days we need some nice expertise here on YouTube, and I think that I give that to you. If not, okay, at least you're still here. I know a lot of people hate me, and that's fine, because I'm not going to be right all the time. For example, uh, two teams that I was just wrong uh, when it came to 2015 NFL season previews that I made for each and every team in the NFL. The Arizona Cardinals, I thought they'd be an 8-8 eight eight football team. I was wrong on that. The Buffalo Bills, I thought they'd be 7-9. It looks like I'm wrong on that. But other teams, hey, I got it right. Like I told Texans fans, you're not going to be very good. I told um, Vikings fans, you're not going to win more than 10 games. Um, you know, I, I do have a lot of correct, spot-on predictions. I mean, a lot of people are uh, quick to move the, the Chiefs as division winners. I say, no. Um, you know, so I do, I pick the Falcons to go to the playoffs. You know, I mean, I do have uh, things that I get right and get wrong like everybody else. This is no, there's no proven 100% guy. There will never be a 100% guy. Um, but I think I do a pretty good job. So anyway. Let's keep up the growth here at James Carter TV. I appreciate all the support. And with that said, let's start this Q and A. All right. First question comes from Payne GFX JCTV. That's me. If someone put a gun to your head, wow, we're getting really morbid, and you had to bet on this year's Super Bowl winner, who would it be? Um, if this was the case, and I have had a gun to my head before, and not a story I want, or I want to recount right now, but it did happen. Um, I'd stick with my prediction that I had before the year, and that would be Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers getting it done. Uh, but, 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 with that said, 
Um, number two, I have to see the Patriots because right now they're the best team in the AFC and it's not even close. So really you're looking at a team that's almost guaranteed, almost guaranteed to go to the Super Bowl. Although I do have the Denver Broncos going to the Super Bowl and I'll stick with that just because I want to stick to the courage of my own convictions. But the Patriots are just looking like Super Bowl, uh, a Super Bowl team. So it'd be wiser of me. Uh, to pick the Patriots who look more guaranteed to go to the Super Bowl than the Packers. Because the Packers, although they will definitely go to the playoffs, they will definitely get uh, get a bye week. They will go up against difficult teams, most likely. Like the Seattle Seahawks, they could be a team that even though they go on the road, they don't look very good on the road, they could give them problems. The Arizona Cardinals could give them problems. Uh, I don't think the Falcons would, but hey, maybe Matt Ryan can actually win a playoff game. So there is an argument to be made for the Patriots, but I'll stick with the, the Green Bay Packers uh, if there was a gun to my head. All right, Payne GFX has another question. JCTV, that's me. Who are your top three current and top three all-time favorite players in the NFL? Now, as you all should know, if you don't, I'll tell you, I am a Tennessee Titans fan. So this was very difficult for me because I don't want to include too many Tennessee Titans um, but look, when you have a favorite team, look, those are going to be your favorite players. I mean, you for me at least. Um, especially when it becomes, I, like, you'll face a team and you'll hate that team for that week. So at one point or another, I've hated each and every player in the NFL because they've gone up against my team. When you go up against my team, I don't want you to win. So I've hated you. Whenever you've made a nice play against my team, I'm like, ah, fuck this guy. So with that said... Um, I limited the amount of Tennessee Titans on this list, but there are still a good amount of Tennessee Titans on this list. So let's go top three current. Number one, Marcus Mariota. I mean, come on, he's my quarterback. But then number two, I have Steve Smith. This is his last year in the league. I didn't love him too much when he was with the Carolina Panthers, but I love him now. He's just a, a, a old angry man, old geezer that likes throwing people around, calling people out. He's entertaining, man, and he raises hell, okay? And then number three, I like to defend Cool Joe Flacco. I got two Ravens on this list, um, but I, Cool Joe Flacco, I, I like his temperament. I like his, his moxie. And um, I, whenever he goes against the Patriots, I mean, I love rooting for Joe Flacco and the Ravens to win. So there's number one and number two. All right, and number three. All right, and then my top three all-time favorite players in the NFL. I said I wanted to limit the Tennessee Titans, but I, I, I can't. I, I, I can't. I have to have two. I, I have to. So I took Steve McNair number one. This is my favorite player of all time. I mean, especially, I'm going to sound like Stephen A. Smith. Being a black man, watching a black quarterback like Steve McNair go in the pocket, making plays. It was just tremendous to watch for a black person. But he's kind of right. You know, when you're... And this is... I think it's one of the more ridiculous things in society, but I'm not going to go that far. Uh, but for some reason, when you're a little black kid, you love watching black quarterbacks because there are so few of them, and you identify with Steve McNair, especially when this is your favorite team anyway. Um, so magnify that. He's my best uh, favorite player of all time. All right, number two, Eddie George. Sorry, had to do it. And then number three, again, I, I, for some reason, I really liked black quarterbacks when I was younger. So Donovan McNabb, I, I, I don't know why. And Michael Vick was, would be number four. Uh, I don't know why. I, I'm sorry. This is the case. I know it's stupid. I know. Believe me, it's so stupid. I hate when people like other people just because they're black or because they're white or because they're whatever. But this is the case. I know I'm flawed. Come at me. Just go ahead. But these are my top three. All right, and then last question for Payne GFX. Give a brief opinion on the Deflate Gate and all the other Brady Belichick controversies. Now, when it comes to Deflate Gate, I really didn't care. I mean, I guess, yeah, okay, they cheated. Okay, fine. Um, you know, just, just punish them accordingly and then get out. And I have no doubt um, that the Deflate Gate was true, that Tom Brady did def have the football deflated. And I don't care. Um, because ultimately the the Colt pa uh, the Patriots were going to win that game. I mean, they blew out the Indianapolis Colts forty five to seven. That game was going to be won regardless. 
All right, so with that in mind, I really don't care about that one. Spygate is kind of fucked up. Uh, that one is a little bit too far when it when it comes of uh, in terms of spying on other teams' practices. That's 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 a little too far for me, and they were punished accordingly for that. But I find it so weird why the Patriots feel this sense of entitlement that oh, like everyone's saying that this is the Patriots' revenge tour in 2015. Why they didn't even I and mean, they took a first round pick from you, but. I, I, I don't get why the Patriots are so pissed off that they were punished accordingly. Isn't that one of the most pretentious things you've ever heard? Like, oh, how dare you guys punish us for something we did wrong? Like, that makes no sense to me. So I don't understand when people say, well, the Patriots, they were so pissed off against the NFL in 2007. That's why they went 16-0. and Yeah, that's true. But why? I mean, isn't that one of the more ridiculous things you've ever heard? Like, that's if, hey, let's say the U.S. government found out that, I don't know, I killed the guy. And I did kill the guy. But as soon as I came out from jail, I started showing everybody, yeah, I'm punishing you guys. I, I became a successful businessman, and this is a big fuck you uh, to the U.S. government. What? You still committed a crime. I mean, what makes you so pretentious that you can feel as if, oh, I'm getting revenge? For what? You were punished accordingly. You broke the rules. You were punished accordingly. Why do you feel as if you need to come out and defeat everybody and beat everybody and show them? Show them what? We already know you're great, but you cheated, and now we're punishing you accordingly. Um, but whatever. All right, so next question. Do you think Tom Brady will win another Super Bowl? And this comes from Henrique Lopez. Um, this is kind of a tough question for me because it's so uh, presumptive and projective in terms of, I don't know what's going to happen in 2017. How am I supposed to know? But I will use this evidence to try to come up with an answer. The Patriots have won four Super Bowl out of Brady's 15 years. Um, and only 14 of which have been him starting, by the way. They did go 10 years without winning one. Was that an aberration, or were, is that just the case? I don't know. Um, but they went 10 years without winning one. Um, but the AFC, I mean, where are the superpowers in the AFC? I mean, once Peyton Manning is gone, and he will be gone next year, who is going to challenge the New England Patriots in the AFC? I, if you asked me in August, I would have said the Miami Dolphins. Now that does not appear to be the case. There's a, two teams that I'm looking at, but they're young, and that's the Tennessee Titans, the Oakland Raiders, and possibly, possibly. Actually, no, I'm not even going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was considering them, but you know what? No, I'm not even going to consider them. Forget it. The San Diego Chargers, if they can build a defense again, they could challenge the Patriots, but, oh, the Ravens, the Ravens, don't count the Ravens either, but, man, that's a pretty weak AFC, so, <clears throat> I'm going to have to say, yeah, I'm going to say the Patriots will win another Super Bowl, um, that's just the bet I'd have to make, um, just because the AFC, who's going to challenge them for the next three years while Brady's playing three, four years? All right, next question. Is it hard? Oh, by the way, this is asked by Trending Titan 19. Is it hard for you to make friends in college since Vandy is such a big university? That's the first part of his question. To answer that question, no. And my theory is this. Number one, I'm a pretty likable guy. You know, that's just number one. Um, but number two, I, I believe when there's more people, I think it's easier to make friends, just statistically. Because if I give you, if I throw you in a group of five people, it's going to be hard for you to find one person that you can really relate to. But if I throw you in a group of 500, there's more likely to be a chance of people that you connect with. And that's why you'll see in college, people develop <clears throat> and find their niche of guys, you know? And you'll have plenty of niches. I mean... I'm a pretty versatile guy, so I have certain friends that I go to to talk about sports. There's sports guys. I have other guys that I, I, I talk to to talk about other things. And then these guys just have fun. Uh, so you, it's easier to me than it was in high school, for example. High school, it was just more of what social class are you in? Um, and that's pretty much the way it goes. Although... You, there is some mingling that goes around, not that it's secluded um, or anything like that, but it, that's, that's the way it goes. And not saying that was a big problem for me either, um, but it, it's easier in college. That, that much is certain to me. Um, so, second question is, how do you stay fit as in what is your workout routine? Now, 
Um, I don't know how well versed you are in terms of fitness, so I'm just going to break it down quite simply. Basically, I'll follow a bodybuilding routine. Um, the days can waver, but this is basically my routine. So, Tuesday, I follow what is called a pull day, which basically the muscles I work, and maybe you already know this, and maybe I'm overtelling you, but whatever. I, I don't know how much you know. Um, and basically, on that pull day, I work back, biceps, forearms, and abs, okay? So, that's the pull day. Then on Wednesday, I'll have a push day. This is when I work chest, shoulders, triceps, and that's it. Um, but I know that sounds simple, but there's a lot of shit I have to do for that day. Um, and then I have a leg day uh, where I work just legs. Um, and then I do that, and then I do that twice per week. So push, pull legs, and then push, pull legs again. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's what I do. And I know it's crazy, I know it's ridiculous. Um, but I really got into working out this past year, and um, I really enjoy it. And it's just a straight bodybuilding routine. And also, after my workout, I'll play a little basketball um, as well. So that's how I stay fit, and that's really what I'm doing. And those of you, you guys have comedy. You guys have noticed that I've built uh, a, a quite a bit of muscle mass. Thank you for noticing, by the way, over the past year. And that's how. All right, so... Last question. What are the top five things on your bucket list? Now, my bucket list is, is unlike any other in terms of it contains uh, things that I consider goals. I mean, bucket lists, they're mainly like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this. But it's kind of like, it's not really a goal. It's just more of I want to do that thing like skydiving. And that's fine. But mine has a little bit more of of goals in terms of like I want to reach this status and this level in order to do this thing um so with that in mind let me tell you number one go to a Super Bowl all right that's number one this is a sports thing you guys can relate to that number two appear on ESPN now whether it be as a consistent analyst or just you know whenever the hell that's fine I want to appear on ESPN Number three, visit Bora Bora, um, one of the most beautiful venues on this planet Earth. I'd love to go to Bora Bora. Number four, move, as in literally move to Los Angeles. Um, take up all my things, move to L.A. I love L.A. I've visited it plenty of times. I love the atmosphere. I love it. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. And number five, buy a Lamborghini. This one's a little bit crazy. Um, but it's, it's a really goal of mine, man. I love Lamborghinis, man. I mean, who really, who doesn't? But I love Lamborghinis. If I could buy one, oh man, it's on my bucket list. You know, hey, maybe I'll never buy, do it, but damn it, it's on my bucket list. All right. Next question from B13, Jersey King 75J. As, just asking, who was on your fantasy squad? My top guys are Julio and Forte and Mark Ingram. But also, I just got Danny Woodhead for Golden Tate. Was that a good trade? Now, I'm going to answer your second question first. Was that a good trade? Um, If you needed running backs, yeah. But if you didn't, I would have made that deal just because I, I do believe the Lions... Yes, Golden Tate is not producing right now. But I do believe the Lions will uh, start to produce better. And will their passing game will start to... Uh, really take off and take fire and catch fire later on in the season. So I wouldn't have traded Golden Tate just yet. But if you needed running backs, then yeah, it was a good trade. Um, and then your first question, who was on your fantasy squad? Now, I'm going to tell you my fantasy squad as of right now. But I do plan to make some moves and some deals uh, within the near future because I have some reconstructing to do. Now, I have plenty of fantasy teams. Um, so I'm just going to pick the first one, the one that I focused mainly on. I have six fantasy teams, and that doesn't include FanDuel or DraftKings. So number one, my quarterback, um, Marcus Mariota. I'm sorry, you know I'm a Titans fan, but hey, right now, what is he? Seventh in fantasy points, so I think I'm doing all right. All right, Arian Foster, Isaiah Crowell, Lamar Miller, Amari Cooper, Calvin Johnson, Richard Rodgers. Uh, also, my other tight end is Eric Ebron. Uh, Keenan Allen. Oh, actually, that's actually for a one-week deal. Uh, so I shouldn't have said Keenan Allen. Um, Kendall Wright, Austin Sferian Jenkins, Droid Bell, Eric Decker, Des Bryant. Why did he have to get injured? Um, Seahawks defense and Matt Bryant. Oh, and Drake Bell, um, who I really don't care for, but that's the case. All right, so there you go. That's my fantasy team. 
All right, next question. In Kumar, as what are your six teams in each conference making the playoffs? Now, this is as of right now. I do keep a running list, a changing list, ever-changing list of projections for the playoffs and what teams I have making it. So this is as of right now. Uh, first seed in the AFC, and then I'll be moving down. Patriots, Broncos, Bengals, Colts. Wild cards are Bills and Chargers. Um, and then, let me really, really quick. Okay, Steelers, I, after that Michael Vick game, I, I don't think you guys are making the playoffs. I think you're going to lose every game of Michael Vick. Maybe one you'll win, um, but I think you guys are in trouble. A, after losing three, maybe four games, <sighs> that's going to hurt. All right, um, and then Jets were close. Um, I have them finishing close. Um, I have the Titans finishing somewhat close as well. Um, the Chiefs are close too, um, but that's it for the AFC. Okay, and then the NFC, uh, moving from top to bottom, Packers, Cardinals, Falcons, Cowboys, Seahawks, and Vikings. Now, I do have the Cardinals winning the NFC West, and this completely goes against my preseason prediction, but you have to change. You have to learn how to change when making projections. You just have to suck it up and say, I was wrong, and then move on. Um, and then the Cowboys winning the NFC East. I do think the Eagles will take the division lead, um, but once they get Tony Romo back and once they get Des Bryant back, I think the Cowboys will make enough uh, a strong enough comeback to win the NFC East late in the season, very late. Um, and then, yeah, Seahawks will be the fifth seed. I feel very strongly about that. Sixth seed, I think it's only going to come down to three teams. I, I don't see too many teams in the NFL challenging for a playoff spot this year. So I have the Vikings making the sixth seed, but close will be the Carolina Panthers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Detroit Lions. And yes, Tampa Bay, what? Go through their schedule. You're going to see about eight or nine wins that they could honestly get, at least seven. And then Detroit Lions, they have four straight home games coming up, and they can start uh, getting off some wins, but they have to fix some problems offensively. If they do, though, watch out for those Detroit Lions. I don't want to talk about the St. Louis Rams. Forget about the St. Louis Rams. Um, any other teams, people, uh, the New Orleans Saints, now you guys just dig yourself too early of a hole. Um, but, yeah, those are my six teams in each conference making the playoffs. Next question, Connor Johnson. As do you think Peyton Manning will play next year? I have to say no. I mean, I'd be pretty surprised. Now, I do have them going to the Super Bowl, and that's great for him, but he can't play past this year. He just he, he can't do it. Another offseason, uh, another year under his belt. No way. He's done. He has to be done. Oh, God. If he plays again, oh, man. I know he loves the game. Forget about it. All right, next question. Edwin Orioles asks, if you weren't a Titans fan, what team would you be a fan of? Now, right now, I would say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I'm a fan of Jameis Winston. Um, and I think uh, he's someone that I had to really uh, de defend throughout the offseason in terms of his ridiculousness and his play. But I think he's going to be a very good quarterback. And I like NFL teams that have struggled uh, for quite some time, not horribly, um, but teams that are, that are that are trying to get to the promised land, um, but just can't seem to get there, because once they finally do, oh, it's ever so glorious. So, I would probably be a fan of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if not them, then maybe the Chargers, if not them, then maybe the Lions, because I, I really like these NFL teams that are just trying to get to the promised land, but have hope. Because there are some teams that they don't have hope. The, Jacks, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they don't have hope. Uh, the, um, the Oakland Raiders are starting to have a little hope. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, they don't have hope. So screw the hopeless. I want a team with a little bit of hope that is going to strive to get to the promised land. And then when they finally get there, oh, it'll be so glorious. All right, next question. Awesomeness92653. Ask how good is Jamie Collins and how good can he get? He's pretty freaking good right now. And he's even leading the New England Patriots in sacks. And he's second in the league in sacks. And we're talking about a 4-3 outside linebacker. So that's pretty nice in terms of that. And he's really good in coverage. Um, pretty good in the run. Could be better against the run. But 
yeah, he's really starting to make good plays, big plays for the New England Patriots, and you can make an argument he's their best defender right now, and I'd really listen to that argument. Um, so, yeah, he's really good. How good can he get? Uh, not much better, <laughs> uh, just because he's really good right now. He's, I don't know, I mean, maybe, is he going to be a Hall of Famer? Uh, I wouldn't bet it. I wouldn't bet on that, but hey, he could. Maybe he can get that good. I don't know. Next question from Grandpa Balls. He asked, did you play high school football? No, but I almost did. The coach my senior year, um, football coach, was trying to get me to be some sort of like Swiss Army knife. He was trying to recruit, or not recruit, but uh, not, not literally recruit, but figuratively trying to convince me to hey, give football a little bit of a try because he saw my basketball skills and he said, man, come on, come play with the team. We can use a little bit of wide receiver, a little bit of running back, a little bit of this, a little bit of safety. And I was just like, man, fuck that. You know, I, I'm focused on basketball and shit, so I don't want to deal with that. But, hey, uh, may, I, I do kind of regret it. A little bit of quarterback, too. I do have that on. Um, but I kind of regret it. I wanted to know how, how good I'm doing uh, high school football. But, no, I did not officially play. And the next question, what are you majoring in college for, hun? And this was asked by Stephanie Thanum. Um, hun, well, thank you. Um, I'm majoring in computer science. This is going to come as a uh, shock to a lot of you. A lot of you really don't know much about me. And I mean, I get it. You know, this black guy on here, he's funny, he's loud, um, he's an idiot, right? Um, so how the fuck, first of all, it was a shock to a lot of you, I was even going to Vanderbilt University, and then it was, now it's going to be a shock that I'm majoring computer science, you're not one of those nerds, um, really, I have a lot of interests, um, in, in terms of life, um, so, I, I would love to have majored in journalism or something like that, and there's no offense to any journalism majors out there. But, man, the payoff is not going to be in your favor unless if you really make it. Now, if you really make it, if you're on part in the interruption, if you're on first take, then that journalism major got put to work. But I'm telling you from the journalists that I talked to, they work too damn hard for too damn little. So when it terms to, when it, in terms of that, I wasn't going to spend money uh, to major in something that's going to cause me all that stress. When I do have also another interest in computers and programming, and I can major in that and make some money too. Um, and then still on the side, do YouTube, and then eventually if ESPN wants to holla, I'll be the first one to go. So, um, yeah, amazing computer science. And this question was also asked by Eduardo O'Neill, so this is the same um, answer there, computer science. Um, yeah, so there it is, James Carter TV, Q&A number two. I'll leave your questions for Q&A number three in the description box. Tomorrow, I will be back to recap the following games, okay? Jets versus Dolphins. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to do it. I may only watch the second half, though, but I'll still review it. Uh, the second game is to be determined. The third game is to be determined. And then the Saints at the... Uh, or no, the Cowboys at the Saints. Now, the second game and third game are to be determined because I don't like making... Uh, in videos on blowouts. You know, I really, I, I really don't like doing that. And if there's not a Titans game, like there isn't one tomorrow, I'm just going to watch whatever's good. So if it's good, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to recap it. There you go. Until next time. Let's go! Wow. Wow. Until next time, James Carter TV. I'm out. Peace.